today we're going to lower the volume uh, we are going to to speak about a few things actually and in the first hour we will go back in time more or less one month ago before react uh, because we are going to speak about this api this is the fetch api that is an html plus javascript api so it works independently from react and and then we are going to use it in react clearly but we cannot use it directly immediately because we need a few more concept to use this api but first uh, let's start from this api and let's make let's try to figure out where we are in the course right so we have and this will be ugly but understandable i think uh, we have our react application right that is actually served by a server that is the white server and then we see the react application in the browser okay um, right do you agree with this we have a react application that is served by a server that does nothing except providing us with the react application and then we see the react application the routing etc everything happens in the browser and that's what we have and we know about components and we know about the state and we know about the rendering etc and then last week we decided to add an api server in express that provides some api in json to whoever asks for this api and we try it with the java the the rest client extension of web uh, visual studio code so now what we need to do we need to find a way clearly to make these two things speak together now ideally the react application will get rid of the fake question the fake answer and will use the api we defined last week for getting the real question and the real answer and same things for your movie uh, application in the in the lab hmm? connecting react to uh, the server to get the information not from uh, an array stored in memory but from the api server that will get by the way the information in our case from a database hmm? so we don't know how to do this in this moment and we need uh, three things to do this the first thing is to understand how to enable this communication hmm? this communication will happen over which protocol HTTP, HTTP. great hmm? so we will have the browser sending HTTP requests to the api server and we at a certain point in time get an answer because http works in this way you get you send a request and wait a bit you don't know which is the bit and then you receive a response the second things that we need to do is to solve this problem we have two servers mm, the React application is served by a server that is in our case localhost 5173 that is one specific domain 
and our API server is actually localhost 3001 or something like that. So these are two different domains. And a browser request cannot be sent for security purpose from a different domain than yours. A server can do whatever you wa they want, can ask whatever other server, other address for information, but the browser can only send natively request to the same server mm, by design. Mm, so the browser can only send request to its server, cannot send request to another address, mm, but we have another address. So we have these two server problem to solve, how to enable this communication in a way that works through two servers. Mm. And we will see one way to do that. Uh, and then in the slide, you also find another way to do that, but we are not going to see it. And the third problem is inside React. And then we, and we, we, we don't have any other problem for, for now. That is, we know that when you update the state, you render a component again. When you upload the page, you render the components, but right now we just work within a component. We did some action in the user interface, we changed the state, this render everything, and again. But now we don't have something that came from within React. We have something that came from outside. And we don't know when this came. We know when we send a request, but we don't know when the response will arrive. So if we run everything on one computer, it will be milliseconds, probably. But if this server is somewhere in the world and the request is maybe very complicated and needs to query the database and do joins, etc., that will maybe take one second, half second, a certain amount of time that we cannot know. Hmm? So we need a way to handle this request and wait in React until we can, for instance, update the state. Hmm? Because imagine your, our situation, we have the questions. So what we are going to do, we are going to have React not reading the um, the array we have in memory, but ask the server for these questions. And then the server will send back the question at a certain point in JSON, React needs to get this JSON, transform it in JavaScript, and add it to a state. And all of this is happening outside of a component, because clearly it's not within, it's not an action of the component on the interface, it's an external action. It's even external to the browser, it's even external to the server of React, it's somewhere else. And all of these has implications, and all of these need to be handled in a special way in React hmm? through a, another hook that we just mentioned and we are going to start seeing today and we will continue to see next week, that is use effect. Hmm? So we have these three things to cover today. The first one, how to enable this communication, that is the fetch we are going to see. The second one, how to solve the problem of two servers and we're going to use cores to solve this problem and the third problem the third thing is how to make all of these work well in react without issue in, in a way that is consistent and repeatable every time that you refresh the application start the application again that is the use effect hook but these are the three things we are going to to see in this order so the first thing is the fetch and the fetch as i told you is an api that works from, it's provided from the browser. Hmm? So it's a React application, it's a JavaScript application, like in the old days. Doesn't matter, the fetch will work in that way. Okay, any doubts on this wonderful picture? Okay, so what's the goal? The goal is clearly to load and send data http request and receive http response in a way that is asynchronously so asynchronously 
in JavaScript means that probably this API will give you a promise and indeed the fetch API will return a promise why it returns a promise why it makes sense that it's return a promise why it's a synchronous it's not synchronous by design I told you the answer before because we don't know when we receive the response so we cannot immediately return we need to wait for the response that again could be quick could be slow we don't know and still we need to wait okay so uh, this is basically what I already told you we need this other bit within the React application that will allow side effects it is use effect mm -hmm. side effects is everything that is not controlled within a component in not a, in not a pure function and clearly receiving information from outside is not something that function can control because information arrives at a certain point and then how to execute and get information from HTTP that is the fetch so the fetch API as I told you is a generic browser HTML5 API so it works on every browser it works not even not only react also in javascript or in other framework and um, does one job sending http requests and getting responses in this http request and as you imagine it returns a promise that solve once the load operation finishes and this promise resolve in an object that is the response object that contains the entire response Notice that the, pro the, the promise is always fulfilled except for network errors. So you cannot really rely on the promise to say, oh, the promise is rejected because the request didn't have the correct body or etc. Because in any case, the promise will be fulfilled. The only case in which the promise is not fulfilled, so it's rejected, is when you have a network error like it's missing the internet connection the uh, address is wrong etc actually a network error hmm? so not a content let's say error or problem with the url etc um, and this is an example of fetch the fetch is a very simple api hmm? it's by default it uses a get to get all the requests to get the request and you def you use it with fetch and in a get format the address for which you want to fetch and it's called fetch because by default use get and get and fetch are similar meaning and since they return a promise you can use a, a sync or a wait a sync and a wait or hmm, then as a way to handle any promise so Another characteristic of the fetch is that it returns a promise that is this response object when the promise is fulfilled uh, and this response object has a series of methods to get the information from the response because the response is the entire HTTP response that has a lot of things and if you are looking for JSON information like we are the response object has a specific method that is called dot json that will get the json from the body of the request and give it to you in a javascript in a javascript object so it does the conversion so get the json from the body of the response and convert it in javascript and also this is a promise hmm? so also in this case you have to use await or then to process the promise so not only the fetch is returns a promise that when fulfilled is the response object but also the response object if you don't want the response object entirely but just the body or in some specific format like json or text it returns a promise that when fulfilled will give you the actual data in javascript format that you want so you need to use a wait or sync twice or then twice and clearly with a wait is more linear because otherwise it's a then with a then with a then 
why also this needs a promise to you? Because we said that this needs a promise because network time. Okay. And this one? Why parsing the JSON needs a promise? Yes, we don't want to block the program, but why we risk to block the program? We don't know the size of the JSON. Maybe it's three lines, so there is no blocking if it's done synchronously, or maybe it's uh, 11 pages JSON with arrays, with object, with object within arrays, etc., very, very long, and this needs time to be processed. So we don't want to block the page in the end. Hmm? So we need time to process the body. Hmm? So all this method returns a promise. Um, so the response object, in addition to the JSON method, has a series of properties like dot OK, that's the Boolean, that is true when you have a success code, so everything in the family 200 for HTTP code. You have also status, so status text that give the full status or the status text, so 200 OK. 404 not found, etc. So also that status. If you need all the headers of the response, you can get it from the headers property, not method. Similar for URL and similar for body. Mm -hmm. These are all properties that give you, let's say, raw information from the response. And here there are some examples of how to, to print and to use this. We will use it rarely in this course because we typically get we know that we get only json so we most of the time don't need to check if the content type is the proper one but uh, you can get this information we will clearly use often response.ok to understand if the response is good or not um, because again since the promise the fetch promise is only rejected for network errors. Hmm? Uh, any HTTP status, including 500 internal server error, will give you a fulfilled promises from the fetch. So you need a way to say, okay, is the response good? Is 200 and similar, or it's an error from our server, API server? So this way to discriminate is done typically to the response.ok, so the dot k property that if it's true means that you receive a 200 status so your request is good you can continue processing the body as a json etc or you can uh, and if it's not true mm, clearly you receive a status that is 404 it's 500 etc so you can handle it separately mm. but this again it's because the promise of the fetch it returns fulfilled always except for network connection errors, not for server errors. That is more related to the content, as so it needs to be handled separately. And here there is uh, an example in which you check the response okay, so it's not okay the response, so you throw an error with the status text, whatever it is, for a, um, not found, internal server error, whatever. And then it, go, it continues, in this case, the check saying, okay, get the content type, and if the content type is not JSON, so if the response is okay, but the content type is not JSON, then I will throw another error, because I'm expecting in that specific call to get a JSON, and instead the server send me an HTML file. So there is something wrong at some level in my request, Maybe I forgot to pass a parameter, or the server has issue, or they changed the API, I'm using the wrong API for whatever reason. And then finally, there is a catch to get all the errors and handle this. So this is an example. We, we typically, again, just, we'll just typically use if response is okay. And other things are extra um, uh, error checking that in some cases makes absolute sense to have. Um, 
clearly the fetch doesn't only give you a get method but you can use all the http method in the get in the in the fetch and the way to do this is to use an optional second parameter so the first parameter of the fetch is the resource so the url to to query and the second optional parameter is an object it's not a string it's not an array it's an object it's a javascript object that have properties that you can or cannot define so if you create this object you can have a subset of these properties if you want and these properties are the method if you don't want to use get but want to do a post you have to use method colon post if you want to pass a specific property in the header of the request you have a parameter that is of the object that is um, either uh, if you need to pass a body hmm, think about the post request of our api server we need to pass a body with the new object to create so we need to pass a body with a post and so in this case you can specify a body in json for instance and then you can pass it and then there are other main properties there are other properties one is the mode of operation that's by default is same origin that is the, the, the behavior of http standard so all the requests from a browser can go through the same domain hmm, url domain plus port hmm. uh, if you have any credential to be passed through the request and if you want to have some specific abort signal to communicate with the first request to quickly go out of the fetch while it's in process and we clearly these are the main three that are used very very often the method because you again sometimes you want a post a put a delete etc any headers you want to pass in the request and clearly with a post or a put the body that you have to pass to the request we also are going to use mode and credential credential like the last week of the course and mode um, soonish and here there is again an example of a json content with fetch notice that this is, just, this is plain javascript again this is not react this is just javascript hmm? uh, so the fetch has the url and in this object there are the methods that is post an header that is specified as another object and the body that is the object to send in this case in json and we have seen last time that there are these methods to convert hmm, from an object to json and vice versa there is also the method to convert from a json object in J javascript format into json text hmm, to be sent hmm. so this is the the way to get the object in javascript and stringify convert it in json in textual format and pass it as the body so the fetch will get will do a post with this content type as header and with this body to the server specified in the url and we'll wait if it's dot then in this case it doesn't have a dot then but with a dot then we'll wait for a response and you have then to process the response um, and other things about the response body hmm? i already told you that you can use the method.json to get the json as a javascript object from the body there is also the dot text to do the same but to get in a textual format as a string and then there are others method to get information from the body in an object type in a javascript object or some way uh, but the key point is that you can only use once this method per fetch request this means that if you get a response and you use response.json then, and then you store clearly the results of the operation then you cannot use response.txt after that because you can consume the response body with one of these methods only once so if you do response.json that is it's over you get the information in json format and you cannot access with one of these methods to the response object like you lost the response object 
Similarly, if you do response.txt, you cannot after do response.json because if you consume once, it's enough. Mm -hmm. You can only consume the response through one of these methods once. So pick one, the one that you need, and after that, the response body is not usable anymore with one of these methods. If you try, give you error. Okay, so this is a peculiar, another peculiarity of the fetch of the response object of the, the, the fetch returns. All these methods consume the response body forever. So once you use one time, that response object cannot be used again with one of these methods. You have to do another fetch, get another response, and use it if you want. Um, well, clearly, if you have to do multiple fetch in sequence, like I get, uh, in this case, get all the users from this URL and then get the first user to do another request, then it's easier to read and to catch if you miss something or do, did any error if you use a wait and a sync with respect to then, to the dot then, because otherwise it will be a dot then concatenated, the fetch, dot then the response, dot that another fetch, dot that another response. But it's possible, even do, with then, it's just clearer to do that. So if you do, you need to do fetch in sequence, you can. Uh, if you want to do fetches in parallel, that's another things you can do. Hmm? Uh, the idea is that you use promise.all. If you remember, when we sp spoke about promises, we say that there are various methods to handle promises, to do promises, including promises.all, that uh, wait for all the promises to be fulfilled before processing the results. Hmm? So promises.all will, uh, since the fetch return promises, if you want to do multiple promises, multiple fetches in parallel, and get the results when all of them are done, so when there is no network error for any of them, you can use promise.all, wait for all the promises, and then parse all the results and do whatever you want. This is useful when maybe you have to get, um, typically to get, um, some information that is maybe stored in two API different, two different API, but you need to display them, for instance, in the same page. So imagine that in our application we have all the questions and all the answer in the same page. But we have two APIs, one from the questions and one from the answer. So if we need to display both on the same page, we need to ask for both. Because otherwise our application will first show the, answer, the questions, and then after a while, the answer will appear in the same page. And it's not something that you typically want. You want to show to your user the page with all the information in it, not just with part of information. So one way is to do promise at all. And then, most importantly, actually, if you get an error while processing the answer, you, you show only the questions. And so there are holes in the web page you're showing. So in this way, you get all the information that you want only when you are sure that all the information are available and you are ready to display them together. So you can, for instance, fill the page with all the needed information and not just with part of them. So in those cases, promise.all is uh, the way to go. Again, this is plain JavaScript, but also in React works the same. Um, so fetch is the basic library, just, just to mention this. Fetch is the basic library, we're going to use fetch, it's available in all browsers, uh, but it has some shortcut. Uh, for instance, uh, doesn't have a way to set our timeout. You send a request and you, with fetch and then you wait for the standard timeout. You cannot say, okay, I want a longer timeout, a shorter timeout before processing, before saying that there is a network error, for instance. Um, you cannot cancel a request for real. You send a request and you wait for the answer. So for basic stuff, most of the time it works well, uh, but for some uh, issues, for more advanced usage, uh, there is, for instance, uh, this library that's called Axios, that again, we are not going to, to use and to see because the fetch is enough for our purpose. 
just to tell you that it exists and it's more advanced than the fetch. So if you need to do something more complicated, uh, like, or some facility more like uh, automatic JSON conversion, or you need to do something like this in Node.js, you can use this library, it's called Axios. Uh, because fetch is an API of the browser. So in Node.js, it doesn't work because you don't have a browser in Node.js. So it's a JavaScript API for the browser only, not for Node in general. And Node that doesn't have the strict equivalent of the fetch, but you can use a library and you can use the same library in the browser and in Node if you want. So this is, again, if you need more, um, some more sophisticated usage of the fetch, uh, you can use this Axios uh, library that is installable, npm install Axios. Okay, any questions? So this is a very simple API, actually. Uh, just three par two parameters and an object and double um, promises for getting the result. Any questions on this? Because this is first step one. No? Okay, so let's go to step two. And then we, we are going to, to use the fetch in a small example before using React. So step two, how to solve the two server problem. That we enable, with fetch, we enable the communication between the browser and the server, um, but we have the problem that by default, it cannot be another server, it cannot be another address. And again, for address, I mean domain plus port. So it doesn't matter that both server in our case will run on localhost, because one is localhost 5,000 something and the other is localhost 3,000 something, okay? So we have uh, this two server problem that is actually simplified here. So when we run our application, we actually have the React server that we don't see, but there is, that the React server that in an initial HTTP request send the React application to the browser of the person, wherever the person is. In our case, it's on the same computer. And then it's the browser that does everything. All the routing, etc., is done in the browser, and the server is just there, providing the first page, the only page that we need. And then now we have the fetch. That is not for getting information from the server. We could, but we don't have access to this development server because it actually does nothing except providing the React application. But we now have this fetch that needs to communicate with something else. Hmm? That is our Express server. So this React development server does not run clearly Express and you cannot write your own route on this uh, server. It's just there for getting started with React. And then if you need more, you probably need not to use the React development server. You need to use something else. And what we said we want is that the fetch will speak with our API server, that is the one we did with Express last week. And this server actually, uh, even if we modify it, it doesn't not understand the JSX and doesn't know the React components. So it's a server that we cannot say, okay, we, we cannot say, okay, we get rid of this and replace this with Express and keep everything else the same. We cannot because Express is not able to understand React components and send the React application as this React development server to the browser. And vice versa, the React development server is not, we cannot personalize it. So we don't have only the problem of different domains and different ports. We also have a problem that the React development server is not personalizable and the Express server doesn't understand 
JSX and REST components. So it doesn't know how to handle it. It just knows how to handle plain HTML, plain JavaScript, plain CSS, plain um, JSON, etc. So we have these two server, in a way, and we need to handle them. So there are issues, clearly. Uh, some issues are related to the deployment and others are related to the opportunities. So related to the deployment, so now we have two servers and we are not going to deploy anything, but if you need to deploy a React application and the API server, we, we have two servers. So it's better to have two servers or it's better to have one server. So it's a matter of trade-off. So in some cases, it could be better to have two servers to maybe share the load. In other case, it's easier to have one server that provide everything so that you don't have a cross origin request you don't have to handle with security policy of http etc um, that is this one and also you in our case we have our api server but imagine that your application needs to i don't know get the weather forecast from a service hmm? I don't know which, but let's say that there is a weather forecast that has APIs on a certain uh, URL. And you, get, you need to get a weather forecast to display it in your application, to do something in your application. That's another server that you don't have control to. And so from, if you're from React and needs to access through the fetch to this other server, it's not something to say, okay, I will bring the weather forecast in my own server. I will do weather forecast now. I will use the service, but it's an external service. D different domain, different port. So it's a cross-origin request because it's a request that goes from across different origin. My origin, that is localhost, whatever, or the URL of my server and this external weather forecast uh, server. So we still have, so in our case, we can say, okay, let's try to make it one single uh, server providing Express API and React, but in the real case, if you want to access to other servers, you cannot always do this. You sometimes have uh, to access to resources that are on external API server. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do it from React, there are some conditions that should apply because React is, ra is running in a browser and the browser can do some things, but not, not everything differently from the server that instead can do basically everything that the operating system will allow to use. So there are two possible solutions in the end, uh, in our case specifically. One is to continue to use two servers like we have. So we have the React application server that sends the React application to the browser that we interact with, and then the browser through the fetch will speak with our express server that's the way that we we have set up things right now but we need these things here this course enabled on the server or and this is the the, the way we're going to do in this course we're going to set up course in the server and enable so that this communication is enabled we are keeping two servers. We need to run two servers, one from Express and one for React, and we will have the browser speak with the Express server to cores, thanks to cores. And the other option that is not what we are going to, uh, to do, but it's in the slide, so if you, every time you need in the future, you can have a look how to do this, is to create a bundle of the React application. So compile, in a way, the React application, so that is made by HTML, CSS, and standard JavaScript. So no JSX, no components, etc. just functions in JavaScript. And having the expert server serving this version. So creating a bundle of the React application so that any server, any HTTP server can serve it. Even clearly this is not the version you are developing. 
this is the results in a way the compiled version of the react application mm -hmm. so it's different from your uh, application so this is in the slides but we are not going to to see this we are going to see how to use two separate server in um, with cores and we already said this right so the Red Web server and the Express server are all separately. They have different hosts and different port. In our case, only different port because they are actually local host, both local host. But different port is enough to say that they are not the same origin, they're not the same host. Um, so what we want to do is that the browser through the fetch will call this localhost 3000 and get the JSON file from, from that hmm? while being served by the React application server. Uh, so, again, we must run two web servers, one with npm run dev, that is for running React, and the other one with nodemon server.js or node server.js or whatever. So we'll have two projects, two different directory, two terminal, one for launching the server and one for launching the expert server and one for launching the React server. Hmm? And so what do we have at, until now? But we have this problem that is coarse. Uh, do you know coarse, what it means? Well, it's written there, actually, but do you ever heard coarse before me saying that today? No. OK. Yes, maybe. No? More or less. OK, so, so by default, as I was saying before, a browser can only make HTTP requests. A browser. Notice that the subject is fundamental here. A browser can only make HTTP requests through JavaScript to the same origin. That means that our React application can query the localhost 5173 server to get information, but cannot query maps.google.com because it's a different origin. So what you, what you do in a classical way is not having the browser through JavaScript send this request, but having the server send this request. Because the server can do basically whatever they want. It's a program. This is valid for any JavaScript application running in the browser. Even, even multiple pages. But if the request is done in the browser through JavaScript, in the browser to JavaScript, it's the same problem. Because it's a single page in a multi-page application that does the request. If it's the server instead that does the request and uh, get the response and put the request in an HTML page and provides the page to the browser, that's not a problem. Uh, the fetch in the browser, the fetch API in the browser, can only send by default a request to its own domain, to the domain of, to the server that provide the page, not to other servers, not to other domain by default. So since this is a limitation, it's a default security policy actually of HTTP. Don't trust the browser too much. So an application running in the browser can only do this. Um, there is this methodology it's called cores that it's a cross-origin resource sharing. Cores stand from cross-origin resource sharing. So going away from I can JavaScript application in the browser, uh, ask for information only from to my origin. But they also ask information across origins, so to other server other domain. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a methodology that exists, it has pros and cons um, that we are not going to, to discuss here. Um, and it must be enabled at the server level. 
So there is actually not a lot of change or no change in our React application, in the JavaScript application, that continues to behave normally. But it's the server that should know that it can receive requests from outside. Okay, so all, all of these, we set up all of these for development and only for development and we and not in this way so this is a terrible way to configure course is any of you doing cybersecurity? okay this is a terrible way to do configure course uh, because this as the comments say is enable all course requests so enable requests from every application in the world to get your server and get information from your server without any restriction. So it's not a uh, wonderful idea. We are not going to, to set up this in this way, but you have to install course in Express. You have to import course. Well, not with var, clearly. And then you can use course that is a middleware with app.use. And here in the parentheses, you can set up course uh, in a specific way. For instance, you can say that the only origin accepted, that's what we are going to do. The only origin accepted that is not ourself is uh, localhost 5173. That is our React application. And then you can also limit which API you can, which method you can get through cross. You can, you, you can get all, get, post, put, etc. You can say, okay, I want only that this localhost 5173 get access to get and not to the other thing. So you can limit a lot of things with options here. So this is in general. So it's just two lines. Uh, ins well, installing, importing, and enabling the middleware. And if you remember, enabling the middleware in this way makes this working for the entire uh, server from this moment on, for the entire routes from this moment on. So which are the advantages and disadvantages of this? Uh, well, everything is easier to deploy because we keep two um, servers, one for React and one from uh, Express. Um, it's scalable in a way that requests are sent to the appropriate server. So the React requests are sent to the React server and the API requests are sent to the API server. So if we need to use the API server also for a mobile application, well, we still have an API server that is separate from the React application. So we can reuse the same API server for multiple clients, not just for the one. Um, it's the only possible configuration if the API are provided by third party, so the weather forecast. The weather forecast service typically enable cores to enable a, a JavaScript file in a browser to access these resources. Um, Disadvantages, need to configure course, even if it's two lines, you still need to configure it. Um, well, require using absolute URL to access the API, because from React, you have to write HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash, because it's another domain. Uh, and this is for the cybersecurity folk. Uh, wrongly configured course might be a security risk, because you can give undesired access to the API from who know whom. Uh, but we are not going clearly to cover security here. Um, but just course is something that open like this is bad. You need to specify which uh, HTTP method and which domain will be allowed to use course. Mm. And clearly, if you are providing um, a third party service like the weather forecast, this is not enough mm, for security reasons. So what, what they do, for instance, what they can do, for instance. So you have a, you want to provide a weather forecast service for everybody in the world. So you want open course because you want all direct application in the world to use this. So you don't want to limit to only classical web application. What can you do for limit the access? You, you don't know the local, who, who are the servers, right? The, the hosts that uh, reach out to you as a weather forecast application. You cannot imagine. 
but what can you do? You can set up a limit of request from the same origin in a specific amount of time, just not to get flooded by too many requests. Another thing that this uh, ser service does is You can authenticate the request. Mm -hmm. You typically register to, for the service. They give you a key that you have to pass in all the requests. So they are, at least know that there are a series of users that are authorized in a way to access the resource. And so they can also say, okay, I have too many users. I'm going to block someone. And if one specific API key is misbehaving, they can block only that key and keep the service running for everybody. So it's it's different layers of control and different layer of um, management of these uh, options. That is not related to course specifically, but more generally in how to handle all of these in a more appropriate way, if you, want, if you don't want to say secure way. Okay, and here there is an example. So basically you see you in the API server, you require cores and then you can set up cores in this terrible way. Uh, and then from the fetch perspective, you just, nothing change. Hmm? You see there is a fetch, the URL, um, and then there is a response. If the response is okay, I get the JSON, otherwise I'll get the status text. And then if there is an error, a networker, I catch the error. So there is nothing specifically here for the get to to do this. And also here, the API is like a normal API, mm -hmm. similarly to the one that we, we created, if we, we, not with courses, but with um, question and answer. The only difference is that we enable course, we import course. And then there is everything else about deploying a build inside a server that we are not going to cover because we are not going to use it and we are not going to ask you to use it, but if you need information how to do this in the future you, you have it in these slides okay so now let's put all of this in practice so i created um, a plain javascript application so you have index.js that is express that is express but instead of serving json file it just send the index html page and the index html page so it's basically express but instead of replying to routes for with json file it's replied to one route that is the root with a page that is the index html page and the index html page is a very simple page that just basically add an header that is testing fetch define a paragraph with an id and as a script imported that is this app.javascript so this is a plain javascript application and in app.javascript we can add the fetch hmm? to try to query let's say the questions from our React question and answer server that we created last time. So we want to just get the JSON and put the JSON on screen, like text, without parsing, without anything, to test if the fetch is working and how to use the fetch and how to configure the server. So if we open a terminal and we go in a simple application, we, can, we should install everything that is just Express. And if we run, uh, index.js and we go to localhost uh, 3000 we should see our application doing nothing in this moment because we don't have uh, we have the header here there is a paragraph but no content so it's not showing anything and here we should call the fetch to um, to get something in that page. Hmm? So, exercise of memory. How do we 
write a fetch. Fetch. And then? Hmm? See louder? The URL that is, do you remember? We need to get all the questions. So it was HTTP, localhost, 3001, let's see. 3001, slash API, slash questions. Okay, and it's a get, so by default it's done. Uh, what we are missing here? Oh, we don't need the init object because it just is a plain get, so it's default. We missed ending the promise, so for instance, await. We need another, we miss another things before this line. No. Use strict. This is plain JavaScript, so we need to use strict. Okay. And now, So this is const uh, um, response. And the fetch is already available in the browser, so there is nothing to install. Now, we have a response, awfully. So what we need to do with the response? Mm, well, let's say that there is no network error because we are on the same computer, so it would be extremely difficult to generate a network error. So. Let's assume that promise is always fulfilled. So yes, try catch. Um, but if the promise is fulfilled, how do we know if the, the answer is the right one? The response is the right, is the right one. Okay. We need to check if the response is okay. And if the response is okay, we can const uh, data equal await response dot json because in this case is a json yes and then we well and then we need to put uh, this data in the brow in the web page just to show it show them do you remember how we can put something in a web page JavaScript in the browser like one month ago. Document dot get element by ID because we had an ID and ID was result. And then, sorry, yes, or query selector, whatever you prefer, uh, dot, uh, let's say, inner text and we just put data as an inner text. Okay, what is missing here? So this is not going to work. Mm, no, no, data is, well, um, yes. So let's do this. Instead of JSON, that is object. So we want text, so we can transform use text. So we want just to see if there is a response that is a reasonable answer. It doesn't matter what is in the answer. Uh, no, because this is plain JavaScript. We need a sync. We cannot have a wait without a sync. And we don't have a sync. Right? A sync and the wait works only always together. So this is not working because a wait cannot work without a sync, cannot work without a sync um, containing the await. Hmm? So we can either create an uh, empty function without name or we can create a, like a proper function, const main equal a sync and then
and then call the function. Because we need a, a sync together with the weight. Okay, so this is probably working now. And for the same reason, we cannot write a, a weight here because we, we would need an async that contains the weight. But it's not a problem because we just have one line. We don't have any other line after. So there is no other line that can wait from this. And so let me run this. So let me uh, open another terminal for the server. Let me install everything and run it. And let me start this. So if we refresh this, clearly this is not working. Okay, you maybe don't cannot say this, see this, but it's not working. Wow, why, why is it not working? Because now it's fine the file. It's not working because we didn't configure course. And you, you cannot see probably from, from the distance, but the error is actually access, access to fetch at localhost 3001 slash API slash question from origin localhost 3000, so different origin, has been blocked by course policy. No access control allow origin header in the, is present in the request, blah, blah, blah. So fail to load, etc. Because the server is not configured to use course, to accept course request. So we need to configure course. So uh, here index is fine. We can keep here. We can stop here. And notice that the get actually had a positive answer because the, the request arrived just not allowed to give a response properly. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't see an error here, you see an error in the browser because the server says it's not a problem, it's just the browser that cannot accept this as a, as a cross-origin request because it's the browser that cannot do a cross-origin request. So we need to install course, that is an extension, let's say, for uh, Express and configure it. So we need, this is the same application of last time. I just added a validator in the, in the only post that we have, so that you have an example of the express validator if you want, just checking that the vault is not empty, so that the bad is not empty. And I also added for the other, the other hour, a get to get all the answers of a specific question hmm, for the next hour. But it's basically the same thing or get old questions, just get old answer. So we need to uh, import course, require course, and we need to set up as the middleware. Okay, so here in this way is open to everything. Um, but we can say that there is a course option and use this here, course options, as an object. And in these course options, uh, we can, for instance, say that the origin that is allowed is HTTP localhost. Um, 3000, for instance, and that we accept only get as a method. We can write here in this object any restriction we want. In this case, it's just this. So if we run this again and refresh the page, we don't see the error anymore, clearly. And we see, well, the response of the, uh, of the server in a textual format that is just the j JSON file without space, without new lines, etc., with the questions. But this is the right answer. Hmm? 
so the fetch is is working and just putting their information in textual format as a string and no answer so after the break what we're going to do is to not use the simple application and this fetch here but to see how to use these in react and the fetch code will be 99 percent will be the same because actually the fetch is the same api for the browser it's where and how we're going to use and process the response to change the component that will change because clearly here we don't have the component okay so we can do 20 minutes of break and then start again and 10 or 5.